Hi, I'm Bill, and if this is the first time dropping into the channel, welcome. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I did something last night that may impact my channel. Uh, my wife was away from the house for several hours. I knew she wouldn't be back. I made a decision to reach out to an old friend. Uh, I've been having some challenges, and I thought this friend could be of help. She was of help in the past. Um, I remember the first time I saw her, I just sparks flew in my mind and everything. And I said, wow. Um, so, you know, I don't know where this is uh, going to head, but I thought I'd probably ask you if what I'm doing here is right, reaching out to her, you know, some of you will probably have relationships and those type of things, so maybe you can give me some help. I apologize. It's a little bit different of a video. But I, I thought maybe if you, if I showed you a picture of her, uh, then uh, maybe you'd understand. And maybe, maybe you wouldn't feel what I'm doing is so foolish. So um, here she is. Her name's Nina. So I've decided to power back up Nina. Nina was a good friend to me in the past. I guess I kind of got a little bit, uh, a little bit concerned in a sense uh, <clears throat> on a few times uh, when I was imaging and I ran into some issues and stuff like that. Uh, and I learned one issue that I was having was really a piece of hardware that was the issue, not Nina. Um, and uh, I think it's time for me to bring Nina back into, uh, into my orbit, my sphere, my, my kit. I am, uh, you know, really, I'm finding with the Edge HD8, it's a more demanding um, focal length. Uh, you really have to be in my mind, work hard to optimize uh, the performance of your mount, the guiding, um, your focus, uh, many, you know, several factors that you uh, really want to optimize. And then there's always seeing that can foil everything. But, um, you know, as much as I love the ASI Air, and uh, it is truly easy to use. I've come to the opinion, having both a uh, Xenostar Z61, 360 millimeter focal length, and also the Celestron Edge HD8, that I think the better platform for me to reach the goals that I want to reach with my Edge HD8 is to bring Nina back up and start using it again. And, uh, I'm going to kind of just show a couple of reasons uh, why I think that's the right approach for me. Uh, one of them uh, is um, and there's a, an additional thing as well. So uh, I want to run my do ring on my Edge HD 8. And I haven't figured out the best way to power my uh, do ring, but. Since I have the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance, it's, it's very easy. There's uh, two uh, do uh, output ports, and uh, it will manage, allow me to manage uh, those do heaters. I, I can put it in auto mode. I know there's ways that it, you can manage do heaters with the ASI Air. But I think this is a lot cleaner. I already had the uh, Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance, uh, so you know why not bring that into back into the fold. The other thing I think I need uh, additional support when it comes to guiding, and uh, with uh, PHD two, um, I get a lot more information than what the ASI Air provides. Uh, one of the features I like about this is uh, running uh, the guiding assistant, which I ran last night. And I ran it for about 10, 12 minutes. 
So there's just, um, in this approach, as much as I like the ASI Air, I'll continue to use it on my Xenostar Z61 360 millimeter, along with my HEQ5 mount. At that focal length, things are not as demanding. Uh, this is the opinion that I've come to, at least for me. Uh, for you, it might be different. Uh, but when I'm stepping up to the Edge 8, um, Edge HD 8, uh, I'm finding it's a more demanding experience. And in order to uh, successfully handle the challenge, I need uh, a bit more information than currently the ASI Air can provide. Now, maybe that'll change in the future. Um, and I'm noticing considerable differences in guiding metrics between uh, what PhD2 here um, is reporting versus what PhD2 is reporting on my ASI Air Plus. So the other thing um, I like, but I can do it with the ASI Air, is uh, the log viewer. So... The ASI Air does produce a log file, and you can use the PHD2 um, log file viewer to analyze the uh, log files. This is the first time I've, you know, brought it up tonight where I've actually started to look at a log file. I've got a lot to learn on how to interpret it and what I can draw uh, from uh, log analysis, and um, but. Uh, uh, that's what I'm going to be able to do. The other thing uh, that I like about Nina, uh, several things. Uh, one of the plugins is Hocus Focus. And what I'm trying to determine, you know, it's important for me to get uh, round stars, uh, also round stars that are not saturated. And um, Hocus Focus has a couple of f features in it. Uh, one of them being um, Aberration Inspector. I haven't run it yet. I'll probably run it uh, uh, one of these nights when uh, the moon starts to uh, move in its phase to more of a less moonlit night. But... Um, in the meantime, I'll read the documentation, and uh, I want to thank Simon Thompson for reaching out to me on uh, Astro uh, Vagabonds and Friends, our Facebook group. So if you'd like to join our private group, feel free to uh, check out that group and request to join. But this can help me understand a lot about, do I have tilt? So, uh, you know, a range of uh, what parameters are uh, working against me. Uh, so that I know what I can uh, kind of connect. Uh, the other thing I like is ground station and uh, use of pushover uh, to generate alerts to my phone. So if something, uh, I don't recall the complete set of alerts uh, that I can uh, set up for, but it can uh, provide me with uh, alerts based on certain events that might happen during the course of the night uh, imaging through uh, Nina. Uh, so I'm interested in that. And something I like to use before uh, when I was using Nina was Robocopy. So while I was writing to the disk drive uh, on my B-Link U59 mini computer, I had a second drive attached to it. So at the end of the night, I just had to attach, uh, you know, disconnect the uh, second drive uh, from my nuke, and then I had a, a second copy of data. So I really had, you know, a redundant data, and then I could just take that drive in, and then uh, next morning in the van, I could start to look through the data and everything. So there's uh, several p features there. Of course, uh, dark customs for setting your filter offsets. So you basically uh, focus on your... Uh, in my case, I use Luminous, and then it, figure out, it figures out the uh, offset to how much to move the focuser based upon which uh, other filter I might be using, and so that same, saves some time. And, um, and in uh, here, you see in this area here, I'm using uh, Hocus Focus for star detection, star anim, uh, 
and annotator and autofocus and uh, one of the screens that I like in uh, Nina is this uh, star detection result it'll give me information about um, the uh, eccentricity of the stars how many stars how many are saturated so there's a lot of information available that I can do some analysis and all with the goal of trying to optimize the performance of my Edge HD8 uh, at least now at the 1422 focal length where I'm using the uh, .7x reducer so um, you know I think the ASI Air Plus uh, it provided me a great experience it's um, I, I also believe though the right tool for the right job and when it comes to the Edge HD 8 I think of the tools that I have available uh, to work with I th just think that uh, that Nina is the better choice so uh, uh, just real quickly here if I if I can uh, I, had, I just fired uh, Nina up and uh, it was kind of interesting. Uh, the first thing I saw was uh, these messages here. And I go, oh no, not again. You know, why am I spending the time last night uh, to bring Nina up? Was it a mistake? And, uh, and then Simon Thompson uh, reaches out to me over the... Uh, uh, Astro Vagabond and Friends uh, Facebook group and says that's not a Nina issue and he was right. Uh, what was really happening here is for some reason uh, I had every all my connections for the camera into the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance and um, once I moved the camera connection from that USB hub the Pegasus Astro directly into my B-Link U59, this error went away. So there is something about the port I was using, and it was not the uh, USB 3.0 port that wasn't uh, working uh, correctly. Maybe it was the cable I'm using. Oftentimes problems are with your USB cables. But anyway, I saw this and I just hit my head and I go, why am I doing this? But I made a decision to try to resolve this issue. Um, I didn't try to resolve it in the past, and that's why I took kind of the easier route of just going to the ASI Air. And I figured, okay, it's uh, a little chilly outside last night, and I'm tired, but let me stick with it and see if I can get by this obstacle, and I got by this obstacle. So, um, you know, it was just kind of a, an interesting evening. So I did uh, take some images of um, M3. I didn't really have a coordinated, uh, um, I didn't do a full plan last night. Uh, again, I'm trying to understand the parameters that I have available for guiding and how can I tweak them uh, to improve uh, uh, my metrics when it comes to guiding. Uh, but, uh, Plate solving, no problem last night. Everything, uh, everything really uh, looked good, and uh, so I'm going to probably not image again until the May new moon, and I'm going to go down to GMARS where I have uh, uh, an excellent view of the sky. Uh, I had a I had a hard time last night trying to do a polar alignment in my backyard using three point polar alignment on. Um, on Nina. Um, not three point polar alignments problem. It's that my tree and my backyard is so constrained uh, that the view of the sky is um, is so limited. It, it was just a challenge. For some reason with the ASI Air it finds it rotates 60 degrees, finds a clear view uh, that it needs to do the polar alignment and, and that works really well. What I wound up doing to get a good polar alignment is I brought my pole master, QHY pole master, back out, and uh, that's how I did my uh, 
polar alignment last night and if you saw the screen what you see are these telephone cables these trees branches but within that I was able to pick out uh, Polaris and I was able to I think it also looks for a pattern of five other stars to confirm that you actually do have Polaris uh, so I was able to uh, complete it so that worked out uh, kind of good so anyway um, I'm back in the fold with Nina um, uh, refamiliarizing myself with the uh, various uh, features that are available um, also refamiliar you know getting familiar with some of these new things like this screen here and the information that it can provide uh, for me and then I understand how, I need to understand how to set the parameters for uh, aberration inspector so I can see how much tilt I might have in my system and those type of things there is documentation on it I just uh, haven't got to that documentation yet so uh, but I just wanted to give everybody a heads up uh, you're going to be seeing some Nina content going forward when it comes to my Edge HD 8. Uh, you can tell me if I'm crazy or not, uh, but I think it is the right way to go. It provides me the uh, uh, more granular level of information uh, that um, can help me understand the right actions to take uh, to try to optimize uh, the results that I'm getting. All right. So, uh, I'm back in love with Nina. Uh, she was good to me in the past. A few bumps, like any relationship, you know, sometimes there's some bumps in the road. But uh, we're back together again, and uh, Nina and I are going to explore uh, the deepest parts of the cosmos together. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a, uh, a wonderful relationship. And uh, this time around, I'm really going to dig into the advanced sequencer that's um, a lot of capabilities in that sequencer. And uh, I just need to sit down and learn how to optimize it uh, to my benefit uh, to get the most out of Nina. And I guess I'll also get familiar. I I'm not a big Discord, Discord person, and that's one of the things about Nina. you got to go to the Discord. Well, there is a lot of documentation because the community contributes information about around their use of Nina and everything. Uh, just something about joining a Discord server and that kind of stuff. I, I just was never a fan of it in the past, but I will, uh, I will get familiar with it. So, all right. Tell me if I'm crazy. Give me your thoughts. You know, um, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit on my ASI Air Plus. Hopefully it'll understand that you know it has a role uh, but for my Edge HD 8 uh, it's been displaced uh, by Nina and uh, I think my ASI Air Plus will understand and so now I guess I'll just have a backup ASI Air uh, as a backup to the one I'll use on my Xenostar uh, maybe down the road I'll sell it uh, but uh, Nina is my path forward. All right, if you like this kind of content, please give it a thumbs up. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Those likes are important uh, to uh, drive who gets to see uh, the videos that I post. Keep in mind, I have links to OPT and Amazon in the video description. If you're a buyer of either of those uh, um, sites and you use one of my links, uh, it can help drive a few pennies into the channel. Other than that, wherever you may be in the world, I hope you have clear skies. See you next time.